I confirm that we have started. Councillor Hearn. Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the decision days of myself, the executive lead member for children's services, as well as the executive member for education. These decision days are being broadcast in one session live on YouTube and via the County Council's website. So good afternoon, everyone. Moving straight into the agenda. Uh, deputations, I've not been notified of any. There we go to item one on the agenda, which is the approval to spend for 24-26 wraparound childcare programme. And Tracy, I think you're introducing this report. Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, I'm pleased to present to you today the uh, wraparound uh, approval to spend for this uh, government initiative to increase uh, childcare for school primary age children. It's £5.9 million that will be going to support to extend what is already um, quite a reasonable um, amount of childcare for uh, primary school children, um, as you will see in the report. Um, but the spend will be used. Um, um, to support extension of uh, what is currently available and the decision is asked that um, you approve to allow the uh, Director of Children's Services to approve this allocation um, with your um, um, uh, permission please. Thank you. Very much. Uh, Councillor Porter, uh, you've indicated you'd like to speak on this item. Uh, yes, please. Um, first of all, um, it's good news. Great. It's great to have the money uh, to do to develop this service. Um, and I think it's a value, of, obviously, to schools as well uh, to develop a service if they haven't got one already. Um, but I'm conscious that the money only lasts until 25, 26. And after that, the parents and even during this time, the parents may pay and will pay. And so my request is to make uh, sure that the, the services are sustainable and at a price that people can afford. So that's built into the criteria that we set. Um, and also this, um, and it's an officer decision, I think, with the executive member of what criteria, you, how you set this from this paper. Um, could we have a scrutiny or some working party at the halfway point to see how it's going? And if it's if it's reaching what we what we want to reach, um, I, I'm also um, we're really aware already of the high number of schools who are already offering this, um, but most are quite short of spaces, and in fact many have waiting places. So actually, developing the right size of service for each school I think is is a key issue. And I can see Tracy nodding at this. I think it's um, you know, however many spaces you have, you always seem to want more. And they'd like us to have them from seven o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night, really. But I don't think that's the aim of this. It's from eight till six. My final thing is really some children in rural areas through no fault of their own um, actually don't go to school by going in their parents' car or walking. They have to catch a school bus. Um, and that is particularly relevant in rural areas. And I wonder if we can be giving some consideration to how we can make sure that offer is of good value to those parents as well particularly as we've just agreed LTP4 and uh, what or we will be at council this week and um, really how we can use transport as part of this conversation. And I know we've looked at minibuses for schools as well um, and some schools have given them back, some schools embrace the principle, but whether we can look at the sustainability of the travel to the to the uh, school as well as being one other part of the one other element of the sustainability of the scheme. Thank you. Jackie, first of all, I mean, I'll, I'll go to Tracy for some questions first. First of all, obviously, we've got Councillor Penman here, and I'm sure he will have heard uh, your request for, for this to go onto the scrutiny committee agenda uh, going forward. Um, as you know, uh, Jackie, I, I represent a, a rural area. Um, uh, not use this. I also have a, have a six year old at primary school. Um, I'm, a, I'm aware of the challenges. Um, around this, but equally I'm aware of our school transport uh, budget challenges. Um, equally, I think it's important this will uh, you know, be targeted at, at working parents and, mm. and um, you know, if you're working in a rural area, the chances are Generally. you will need access to a car or you will live in close proximity to the, to, to the village um, 
centre. So I, I do take that on board, but I think it is really, really good news. It really, it, it, it is. Um, but I will go back to, to Tracy if you want to say a bit about the sustainability of this and, and helping schools implement. I would hope that we try to support them into becoming sustainable or expanding the offers they already have. Tracy. Thank you, uh, Councillor Heron. Yes, indeed. Um, we do see that um, through our assessment, we have a, a mixed picture um, and very much at the heart of it is about this is a, a bit of pump priming really and innovation. Um, some of those things that you mentioned in terms of looking at you know different ways of delivering this and including uh, child minders as well as group provision and schools. Um, I think, yes, the rural aspect is, is a, a challenge, but it is one that we're noting and one that we're hopefully this money might be able to help to see what might uh, work. It is about self-sustaining so everything is about sort of giving a bit of pump priming but with the ambition that parental fees which are also supported by the government through their various tax-free childcare elements can actually help parents to afford and that there is a, a sort of a win-win um, approach and it is about employability here it is about supporting people to access work um, as well as their children having um, good quality provision um, in whatever type of provision it is that works well for that community. And Jackie, before I go to recommend Edward, you did make touch on our um, mini buses for schools programme, which actually has been very successful in my area. And I've got a school that, that's recently started down that. And the reason I mention that is where some of my smaller schools have federated. They use that to do their wraparound school at one of uh, care at one mm -hmm. of their schools. Um, which allows those smaller schools to offer something that perhaps they might not have been able to on their own. So I, I think that this really is great news um, for, for parents. And I think actually it's also good news for schools because all of us know that with primary trying to get people in, being able to offer the wraparound care um, it, it is really a key issue for parents. Um, Councillor Forster, do you want to say anything um, before I go to the recommendations on this one? Can I, while I'm waiting for Council, yep. so can I just say, can I just declare an interest, but it's non-prejudicial because I'm also a governor of a school, but it already has the wreck around childcare from eight till six. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, fine. I don't think Steve um, has indicated. So with that, I will go to the recommendations at three and four, which I'm happy to agree. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, staying with you, um, yes. and we go to item two, which is the child care sufficiency assessment for 22-23, Tracy. Hello, I'm delighted to um, present to you today the uh, child care sufficiency assessment for 22-23. Um, in through the report, you will see that it's um, a relatively positive picture for um, child care, especially within our early years um, provision, which is also seeing a marked um, change this year in terms of the government's ambition for extending those offers to younger years. Um, that's two year olds and nine months. Um, and this assessment gives some indication to where we believe there is some challenges. Um, it also goes on to uh, inform about the finance that is coming through for the DfE and also the uplifts that were given last year for um, early years education providers um, um, in helping them. It also um, starts to talk about the wraparound programme that we've just mentioned because that was uh, where it was when we wrote this uh, sufficiency assessment. Um, and that it also gives us the key findings around the fact that we have places and providers which have moved with population, but also um, we have seen um, like a national position where some childminders have uh, left our, our um, market um, and there are workforce considerations that are made within the assessment to identify this also, which is a national interest, uh, a national issue where um, workforce for the childcare market is quite challenging um, and can affect some of the places that um, they have. All in all, the take up for early years entitlement has remained good um, uh, for us, um, for both our disadvantaged twos, which have been uh, generally increasing, and also our universal pupil premium children as well. 
um, and returning much better than um, the COVID times. Our activity, our holiday activity and food programme is also cited as doing well in this programme as well. Um, and so therefore I sort of recommend to you um, this uh, assessment um, in the, the light of our actions that we have also identified that we will take to ensure that the childcare market continues to be as fit for purpose as it can. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And we have recommendations. Uh, Councillor Porter, you've indicated you want to speak on this one. You're on mute, Jackie. I should learn after all this time. Um, the rollout of spaces uh, you've identified, and I'm glad you mentioned it in just now because actually the rollout of spaces has to arrive at the same pace as the rollout of the offer. And that's the challenge, I think, for us as a council to be managing or not managing, but certainly monitoring and helping. Because as you mentioned in the paper, the level three and above Si um, spaces uh, or uh, positions are not necessarily being filled at the pace we'd like them to be and we do want to make sure that our safeguarding remains high in this area and our concern for children that may have special needs developing uh, throughout that time and I'm particularly also concerned about the gypsy and traveller communities that we have um, they do tend to go to school because they're offered those places but this takes a bit more organising for them as families um, and certainly I would like to find a way of making a special effort to get those children into the, the habit of going into early education through this childcare offer. And uh, I just wanted to also raise the fact that um, if we need, uh, if, if special needs develops or the special needs issues develop, is there anything we can do to equip the, not only the physical equipment, but also to equip staff and training and our training programme better so that we're tackling this earlier on rather than waiting until these children get to school. I know we do do that, but it's just adding that part to the childcare sufficiency, really. OK, uh, helpful. You said m many of those bits were, were picked up in the report, but Trace, is there anything there you would want to comment on specifically before we go to recommendations? I don't think um, um, specifically, I think those are all things that are noted and understood. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Forth, did you want to say anything on this one? No, it's self explanatory. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Now I will go to uh, the recommendation at three and uh, happy to approve the assessment at Appendix One. Tracy, thank you very much. And we're staying with you now for uh, item three, which is the Merton Infant School Age Range. Yes, um, I'd like to present to you today in on you know the theme of childcare sufficiency. Um, Merton um, School would like to go age downwards um, and take children um, in the younger years. And the paper outlines that the school have considered this very um, responsibly and has put it out to public notice. And there have been uh, minimal objections to that, and it's seen as a good idea. So I re recommend it to you um, today to um, hopefully give approvals so that they can can actually start delivering that service. Excellent, thank you. And uh, no one's indicated that they wish to speak on that one. Just looking around to see anyone else want to. Uh, no, in that case on this one, I'm very pleased to agree to recommendation at three. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for today. Tracy, thank you very much for those reports. Um, Give you a break now and uh, for item four, which is the Peel Common Infant School and Nursery Unit and Peel Common Junior School proposed amalgamation. Uh, Mark, I think you're introducing this one for us. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, this report on the proposal to amalgamate Peel Common Infant and Nursery Unit and Peel Common Junior School forms part of a longer term strategy to reduce the number of school spare school places in Gosport Central and it follows on education and inclusion officers uh, and, uh, and an extended period of um, working with the school to reduce costs, particularly at the infant school and detailed conversations with the strategic development team to 
manage down the pans at both both schools from 60 to 30 as as outlined in paragraph 7 8 and 9 it's worthy of note that this proposal was um, was in agreement with both governing bodies um, on a proposal to consult on the amalgamation the report is seeking to enter into a formal consultation period and comes after an informal consultation with the school and community. That consultation generated 15 responses as detailed in paragraph 21 and 22, broadly falling into three categories. Some concern regarding the education outcomes during any transition, what will happen to the infant school site and building, and that it was a good idea. In summary, we're seeking approval to formally consult on a proposal to amalgamate Peel Common Infant and Nursery Unit and Peel Common Junior School into a three to 11 primary school, which would come into effect from the 1st of January, 2025. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And um, I, I did note the informal consultation and uh, the information uh, you've got um, in the responses uh, 22 and 23. So I did um, read those carefully. Um, don't I think you should confirm this is our now go to the formal consultation uh, process. And um, I think um, that is very sensible and I, I'm happy to approve that recommendation. Thank you. Well, that brings uh, my part of this decision day to an end. Um, so with that, I will hand over the meeting to Councillor Forster for his decision day. Steve, over to you. Edward, Councillor Heron, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for those uh, decisions that you made. Uh, welcome everyone, uh, both online and uh, watching um, to my decision day uh, as executive member for education. Uh, we'll go straight into this and uh, the first item is deputations, but I don't believe there are any. Adam, can you confirm? That's correct, Councillor Forster. Good, thank you very much. Um, there are equally no key decisions today, so uh, we've got two items on the uh, on the core agenda. The first one is the resource provision at Crookhorn College in Waterlooville. Um, who is taking us through this? Hi, I'm Councillor Forster. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the purpose of the report is to seek permission to consult on the establishment of a resource provision at Crookhorn College, Waterlooville. Um, the provision will create 15 additional secondary places for young people with autist autistic spectrum conditions, and it's hoped that it will open in phases from September. 2025. And the Crookhorn College, which is a very inclusive secondary school, has currently got um, the specific classroom space that can be adapted uh, for this new resource provision. Um, they have a two story block where they currently support pupils with SEN and two additional classrooms which they currently use for humanities. And these can be adapted and made available to host the resource provision, which will take minor works. Um, there's a cladding piece of work going on currently, and these minor works can be done in conjunction with this. Um, obviously, we'd want to know where humanities was going to be taught and a double modular classroom um, is able to be installed for this purpose. As with the other resource provisions, we look at the cost of the children that would otherwise likely go to independent non-maintained special schools compared with the cost of housing them into the new resourced provisions and the report sets out the considerable savings that will be made both in the short term um, while the provision is building up its pupil numbers and then in the long term when it's operating at capacity year on year. Um, and one of the particular advantages of this is that relative to the savings made by these children not going into independent non-maintained special schools, um, they are able to stay much closer to their peers, uh, to their families 
and the cost of the work is only £450,000. Thank you, Natalie. That's, uh, that's most useful. Uh, I really do focus on the benefit to the children from not needing to travel out of area, from having a consistent education and being involved on an inclusive basis, which is very much in line with our Transforming SEND program. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to uh, to see the potential for 15 more places, which are very much needed uh, in the area. And uh, we need to uh, continue our investment into um, SEND spaces uh, across Hampshire. So on that basis, unless anyone else has anything to say, and I'm looking for any hands to be raised if anyone does, uh, I am happy to approve uh, the recommendation as listed at uh, item three, that permission be given to consult on the establishment of a resource provision for Crookhorn College from September 25. Thank you for that, Natalie. Okay, we'll now move on to the, uh, the last item, which uh, was a lot of reading, I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, this is on the determination of the 25-26 admission arrangements. And uh, Nick, I understand you're going to take us through this. Yes, um, thank you, Councillor Forster. Um, so this report informs the executive member for education on the annual exercise for the local authority, which is the consultation process for the admission arrangements for the 26 secondary and 339 um, Hampshire County Council voluntary controlled and community schools uh, for 25-26 and ultimately it seeks the approval of the executive member for education of those proposed admission arrangements for those schools. So as Councillor Forster has already pointed out there was uh, a number of annexes um, so you will see as part of the report there are 16 annexes which constitute the proposed arrangements and by way of a brief summary um, within that, there are five different types of admission policies for those 365 voluntary controlled and community schools. There are a proposed number of reductions to published admission numbers. Um, they are all primary schools, so there are 15 pros, proposed reductions um, across primary schools in Hampshire to their published admission numbers. And there are two increases to published admission numbers um, at a junior school and a secondary school. The arrangements also include five new school specific criterion. They are resulting from the proposed catchment change at Hounsom Fields. Um, the removal of five school specific criterion, which are previous transitional arrangements that have lapsed from prior catchment changes. And there is also the adjustment to the wording of three school specific criterion. I briefly touched on the catchment changes. Uh, there are two catchment change proposals uh, resulting from housing developments, one in the Basingstoke area and one in the Fleet area. And those changes are in response to those housing developments. And then there is um, the policy for uh, community and voluntary controlled nursery schools in Hampshire and also the sixth form policy for Yateley School. There are also four uh, procedural and administrative documents um, that we are seeking approval for, that being the coordinated scheme for main round admissions, the relevant area, which is the body by which you need to consult with, uh, the supplementary information form and the random allocation procedure. And you will see in section two of the report, there are ultimately eight recommendations that have come from the Hampshire Admissions Forum that seek the Executive Member for Education's agreement. Nick, thank you very much for that. Um, amazing that you managed to summarise it in <laughs> such a short time because there was a lot of content there, but you did a really good job on it. Um, Councillor Porter, Jackie, I understand you uh, you requested to speak on this item. Yes, please. So, uh, yes, please. A very thorough report and uh, greatly appreciated. Um, Good job done, I think. Um, Mary, many parents will look at this, I'm sure, over the period of time, uh, particularly if they're looking about uh, which school they might apply to or which ones they've been successful at. So it's a, quite a confusing and difficult and long report, uh, even for us. And so therefore, for the public, it's going to be really hard. And I just ask for publication of the paper to include an index of the policies and each annex to be clearly marked, please. 
because it's not obvious uh, to parents if they're reading the thing from the start and they may not know the sort of school their school that the school they're looking at is and I think the clarity of that would be greatly appreciated. Um, I'm also pleased to see the tiebreaker in the main admissions policy or mention of the tiebreaker but the random issue is something I'd like to take up and I've raised it I have raised it before and I remain of the opinion that children living in a block should not be at a disadvantage because they live in an upper floor and seek the random policy to be used for all children in the same block, not just those on the same floor. I know this is something I felt um, uh, strongly about because uh, it means that somebody on the ground floor would automatically get in and an upper floor may not get in and that that seems wrong that we make that decision and the randomness should come for the whole block. Uh, I looked on the, the paper again, it still keeps saying on the, each floor. So I just asked that question. So could we please look at that in the future? I realise that this has got to be published today for the sake of this, but I'm going to keep banging on about it until I get some <laughs> try to, to make the point. I understand the hypotenuse is longer than the straight than the uh, side. <coughs> so the upper floors are in theory further away from the school but not if the school's tall. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I just want to say first, my main concern though today is that we, we marked this paper clearly so that when parents look at it, they understand it and they understand quickly how to get to the right admission policy for their school. Thank you. Councillor Paul, uh, Porter, thank you for that. Um, Stuart, yeah, I see you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think the points are well made, Councillor Porter. I actually hypotenuse Side, I do agree that, uh, that we need to be as absolutely fair as we can be over that. So I think we've made a commitment to take that to schools, to have that discussion with them uh, and see see where we get to. And we'll very happily update you and members uh, uh, after that. I think uh, your point about okay. labelling the appendices, again, that's absolutely acknowledged. I think that's helpful. Thank you. As I think we should try, and, and this is for officers, uh, to extend the exec summary. Uh, that's not a, not a criticism of the report, but I think it's just iterative, isn't it? I think we could make the exec summary a little bit smarter so that parents can read that and understand where they need to go to in the report. So we'll take those comments away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stuart, thank you for that. And uh, thank you for taking on board uh, Jackie's valid concerns uh, and points. Um, once we started getting into the mathematical discussion on hypotenuse, etc., um, I did go a little bit glazed, so my apologies for that. Um, but I'm sure that uh, we've got those that can come up with something that is a, a respectable policy. Um, I'm also pleased to see the uh, the catchment changes, um, both uh, that are uh, proposed, and uh, I was surprised to see so much activity in the heart region where I'm based. Um, I'm conscious that uh, the changes that are proposed on catchment um, are uh, uh, very well received. Um, so uh, it's encouraging to see these coming through. On that basis, then, unless anyone else has anything to say, um, Ed Edward or anyone else uh, wish to speak? No, OK, thank you. Uh, on that basis, the recommendations then are, uh, are detailed in, uh, in para two. Um, and the uh, the bullet points attached, I am happy to approve those all as listed. That brings the meeting to a close. So I'd like to thank you all for the excellent work. Thank you for the reports the, uh, and the really good summaries um, and uh, for attending today. I'd like to ask for the uh, recording, please, to uh, to be stopped. I'll confirm as soon as that's the case.